government of Nashville, Davidson County. We welcome the guests that are in the audience and glad to see a great number of our board here, almost 100%, so we're glad to have all of you present for this August meeting. And we'll go right to the reading of the code. And before I do that, uh, we've been given uh, counsel from the city. Margaret uh, Darby is our counsel, and she's over by Steve North, and we welcome you to our council, and would you please read the code for us? Certainly. Um, okay, so pursuant to the provisions of Section 2.68.030 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws, please take notice that decisions of the Sports Authority Board may be appealed to the Chancery Court of Davidson County for review under a common law writ of certiorari. Any appeal must be filed within 60 days after the entry of a final decision of the board. Any person or other entity considering an appeal should consult with an, with an attorney to ensure that time and procedural requirements are met. Okay, thank you. I want to say that we're glad to see Emmett here this morning. Emmett has had an illness uh, uh, since the last meeting we had, and uh, he's back uh, at work and says he's feeling very well. And Emmett, we're glad to see you and glad you're back. It is kind of hard to uh, lose weight by being sick, and <laughs> <laughs> it is, Mr. Chairman. I'm glad to be here, and thank you to all the board for their expressions of uh, uh, speedy recovery for me. So, thank you. Okay, you have uh, been given the minutes for two meetings, and the first set of minutes are for the May 24th meeting. Uh, I'd like for you to look at those, and are there any additions or corrections to those minutes? Motion's been made to approve. Is second? Second. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And the minutes for the June 29th meeting. Your motion? Motion's made to approve. Is there a second? Second. Okay, all in favor of approving the June 29th minutes say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, we'll move right to. Uh, uh, both sets of the minutes are approved, and we'll move right to the executive director's report. Uh, uh, Emmett has several civic events there he wants to bring to our uh, attention today and for approval. Mr. Uh, Chairman, with your approval, I'd first like to uh, uh, make an announcement. Uh, we have been over the last few, thank you, sir, over the last few uh, uh, months talking about a, uh, an activity that is noteworthy. Our fellow board member, Coach Temple, uh, is to be inducted into the oh, Hall of Fame. It has been done. It was recorded by uh, ESPN Sports WSM. It will be available for viewing via cable television on August the 24th at 6 p.m. So we'll send an additional note to the board so that you know about that. But again, we're, we're very pleased to have the only uh, running coach that has been inducted into the Olympic Hall of Fame. And I hope you'll join me in uh, showing our approval to Coach Temple for his achievement. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations, Coach. Well, thank you. Appreciate it. Mr. Chairman, uh, back to the agenda. Uh, the first item is the Zach Brown Southern Ground Music and Food Festival. It's a new item to the city. It is being brought to us by the Mayor's Office, the Convention and Visitors Bureau, uh, and Metro uh, Public Works. It's, uh, uh, Judge North, this is a continuation of our uh, effort to activate downtown to provide parking at LP Field for civic events. Uh, Kim, this fits with what uh, we promised from at LP Field Vantage Point in getting engaged in music and other entertainment activities for our broader community. This will impact downtown. Uh, the ticket sales have been uh, very exciting. The request before you today uh, comes in sort of two parts. Uh, Judge, you remember in January, we asked the board to recognize when groups come to the authority asking for civic event access to the site the policy is a 501c3, 501c6. The requester is a 501c7. We did not feel it was appropriate, Metro Legal concurs, for staff to ask you to do something that's outside of a policy. So what we're doing is bringing this to you, 
asking for uh, your understanding of our position, which is not to request a waiver that doesn't fit within a policy, but knowing full well that it's something that we all want to do. So that is what the uh, first activity is. It's a concert. It will be held on this, uh, I refer to it as the thermal site, the old thermal site uh, on First <coughs> Avenue. It's the green space that was used very successfully during, during the July 4th activity. So this is a return to a site that has uh, nothing but positives for uh, the city, uh, and that's a request we put before you today. Okay, do you have questions or before we act on this particular request? I, I would like to j just point out for the benefit of institutional memory, uh, perhaps for some of the newer members, many years ago, <coughs> Uh, the board, nearly every meeting was taken up by great discussion as to everybody that wanted to use the parking lot. <laughs> and we decided to <clears throat> have a policy that the executive director could approve under certain circumstances. One of the requirements and one of the, the problems that we kept running into was that there were these for-profit um, enterprises that wanted to use the parking areas for free. And we established a policy that only nonprofit 501c3 uh, organizations could use the parking lot for free. Obviously, anybody can use it if they'll pay for it and that those payments go to retire bonds and there's some requirements in our bond agreement that require us to charge for parking on the parking lots that we own. As a result of that, <clears throat> generally only non-conforming applications that don't conform to the policy are brought to the board and that, I think that's what Mr. Edwards is doing here. Uh, I, I assume maybe we need to ask our legal counsel that I assume that they're asking for free parking for this. Am I right? That's correct. A portion for free, but all the other areas conform. So it it, it really is a uh, uh, a situation like the RV situation, which is around the IRS statute, not about the other issues. So we are comfortable that we will not have a diminution of revenue uh, to satisfy bond council. Uh, I'm not speaking for them, but this fits within what we've done in the past. I'm satisfied that uh, uh, through the other revenue that will come to the board, that we will have more than enough coverage through the uh, contract that the board passed for the new parking uh, contract, East Stewart Transportation. So uh, we, we feel like we covered all the bases. It, we just felt like it would be an error not to, sh to, to tell the board that it was a request for a waiver, uh, but it's a, it's a very small request that uh, is not out of bounds with anything that we've done before. What, what other, uh, excuse me, could, could, could I follow up? You said that we are, that as far as our bond council is concerned, or our bond <clears throat> obligations, that there will be other revenue coming to the sports authority by virtue of the use of these parking areas. And yes. explain to me what that is. We're going to charge for any spaces above the waiver that you grant. Yeah. Uh, okay, so, so we're, we're waiving just for a certain number. Yes, sir. For a small number that will be used for load in, load out, for okay. staff to, to uh, uh, operate during the, um, the activity. But uh, again, uh, the only, uh, only reason that it's re relevant from my vantage point is to point out to the board the tax issue, as you did, a for-profit uh, group. And how so we we're, we're only, the, 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 the point I, I, I want to be sure I understand is that we're only waiving the parking fees with regard to a limited number of spaces for use of the concert people to load in or load their sound equipment or whatever. The rest of it, the parking areas will be open to the public and the public will pay a parking fee that will come to 
the sports star. Right. I understand. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, just for the clarification, because of course your recommendation says not to approve the parking waiver. I'm assuming that officially you don't believe you have the authority to recommend that we waive it. But what we would be voting on is the partial waiver that Judge exactly. North just. Yeah. Very good. Exactly. Uh, yes. It also says pending receipt of the insurance. Right. Yeah, yeah, which is. Um, <laughs> We would not grant anybody access unless it fit uh, the criteria. So I'm pointing out all that. Uh, we haven't received it. This is uh, just one of those situations where a concert came up. And it's not within the bounds of our 40 to 45 days out. It just doesn't fit. And so this is a, a rush situation. That language is there to indicate to you that we're going to still cross all the T's and dot all the I's on every other issue that the board has said we should be conscious of. Okay, do I hear a recommendation on accepting the recommendation here or approving? I, I move that we approve it contingent on the receipt of the insurance. Uh, okay, you've heard the motion. Is there a second? Second. Okay, further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Approved. Okay. Mr. Chairman, the other three are very familiar to us. They are <coughs> annual events. They are representatives in the audience if you have additional questions about mm -hmm. that. They fit uh, all of the uh, policy requirements that the board has approved. Um, and I would ask the board to approve the, the, the next three in whatever, whatever order or manner you, you okay. choose. Are there any questions about either of the three that are on our agenda today? Hands on Nashville? Frostbite Running Club and the Jefferson United Merchants Partnership. Or anybody have any questions on those? Just be sure that, that it's clear that all of these are 501c nonprofit right. corporations, right? Yes, totally different than number one. Mm -hmm. Okay, do I hear a recommendation on these? Okay. Second. Mm -hmm. Discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Then they are approved. And Mr. Chairman. Yes. So this is so I understand the policy. I was wondering why are these, since they're 501c3, why are these brought for our approval versus the executive director doing? Uh, a board member requested this, a new board member some few months ago, and asked that uh, uh, a different approach was taken, as Judge North indicated. So we bring all uh, all of these activities to the board. We ask a representative to be here. That's different, but it was a request was made and a request that we honored. Mm -hmm. Do we still, I don't remember that, but do we still want that? I mean, I'm fine with it, but we, I know we're bringing members of the public to come. Steve, would you and, comment on that? Yeah, I, I, I wasn't the one that asked for it, I don't no, think, no. But, but I understand that the reasoning, the thinking behind it is one, keep the board advised uh, and to bring to our attention the uses that are being made of the property over which we exercise uh, responsibility. And the second is to give the, the organizations uh, that are good organizations that represent good things for Nashville an opportunity to at least have their name mentioned uh, in public and to appear and to uh, give us an opportunity to thank them for the work that they do and recognize that they are doing good things for Nashville. And it doesn't hurt anything. It takes us about three minutes. Maybe what we ought to do is consider having it as information, but maybe not requiring uh, right. approval, because right. it's information. If anybody had a question, they could bring it up. So we still put it on agenda, but more as an information type thing. It's, it, whatever your desire is. I think that's a good approach. Right. No, and if someone particularly wants a little TV time, I'm sure we can <laughs> <laughs> do that. And we can still invite them to come yeah. so that if there are questions, they'll be yeah. in the audience, like Brian is back there today, smiling at us. Is that, is that, Mr. Chair, is that, uh, is that a policy change? Is it a change that requires a vote of this board right now? I, Sounds I like don't believe so. Go back to policy floating around. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I said to go back to a policy that uh, exists, I, I would not see it as required. I don't think okay. so. Okay. Uh, we'll move on with uh, the LP Field report. But before Mr. I do Mr. that, Chairman, yes. go ahead. I, I, I'm sorry, I'm coming back I, to you. 
I, I wanted to uh, give the board some background on the other items that are okay, on good. the agenda. They're all important items, but in particular, the board over the last few years has looked at this uh, energy policies as it relates to our buildings. And uh, I want to commend the staff at uh, Bridgestone Arena and the LP Field. Uh, you realize that when the buildings were built, some of the technology that's going to be recognized, uh, that's going to be uh, brought to you in a few minutes, did not exist. And over the last few years, they have been great stewards of public funds in finding ways to lower uh, energy use through good management. So today we're going to bring uh, to you, uh, during the report from Bridgestone Arena, and Sean will uh, give you additional background on that, uh, an update that follows the chronology that started uh, well before I came on board and has continued, where the board has voted consistently to look for ways to find energy savings uh, resources. Uh, what you will see is uh, through careful management of resources by uh, uh, Director Rich Reveland, uh, he found a way to use federal funds to drop the cost, Judge North, of the bill that we'll get for the energy savings. And you recall that uh, we looked at a number of different scenarios, and most of those scenarios were brought to us by companies that stood to benefit if we use their equipment. So the board uh, said, you know, find us a third party uh, remedy to this, someone that is an un unimpeachable uh, witness to the fact that this strategy will drop the energy cost. Then you also remember that uh, we looked at some of the contractual relationships that business to business had. Those included private individuals, private companies, corporations, loaning, if you will, lending the money to the recipient of the energy savings device. Government financing is different than that, and Metro Legal and Finance and others said to us, that's not appropriate for our government finance structure, for a private individual to loan money to Metro. So with all those intricacies involved, what we're bringing to you today is a solution that has lowered our overall cost for energy savings. You know, the board approved uh, 10 million uh, four uh, some time ago, a number of years ago. What we're talking about is a reduced amount with a smaller uh, investment on the part of Metro government, greater savings, and shorter payback. So uh, I, I want to highlight that for you uh, as it relates to uh, that item on the uh, agenda that, that uh, Sean will bring to us. Uh, we're not asking for a vote. Uh, this is an information item only. Thank could, you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Could I ask some questions about that? Okay. I, again, for the benefit of institutional memory, back a number of years ago, um, I think it was Honeywell and, and maybe some other energy companies came to us and made a proposal that they would put in this new equipment and would guarantee that it would pay for itself within a short period of time, which at the time seemed like a pretty good deal, but we, the problem was they, put a, they would put a lien, a, a mechanics lien on the public property and but we couldn't do that and it was very frustrating to us. My understanding now is that we are issuing bonds under a federal program to do what we were trying to do before, maybe do it better because it's better technology. The bonds to be paid for out of the savings, basically we're doing the same deal that the companies offered except we're paying back the bonds rather than paying back a loan from the private company. Am I? That's correct. Okay. In addition, the, 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 the federal funding in that mix, that's a, a direct benefit to us that wasn't available then. So it's right. Um, 
the, the, <coughs> the only thing that, that I, I, I'm not quite sure how it fits in is the fact that we continued uh, under our new lease agreement, we continue to guarantee the operating loss cap even if the operating budget falls below, we still pay that four and a half million dollars or whatever every year, even if the expenses or the net operating loss is less than that. And I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not sure how that fits in with the government borrowing millions of dollars in order to save this money, and if that results in a reduction below the operating loss cap, then the benefit of that, of us borrowing the money and paying the money back, goes to the bottom line of the predators and powers management as opposed to going to the bottom line of, of the metropolitan government. I, that, I know that's confusing, but it, it's. I think it is not confusing. I'm just not prepared to I, answer it today. I, I, and what I would it, recommend is that I get you a formal response to that. Uh, what Judge North is is uh, sk skillfully done is it's indicated one of those areas that contractually that we have with the arena. And, and I, I need to get you a more formal response to it. Well, and another thing, too, I think we need to hold that right now until we get down to the LP Phil report, and, I mean, to the uh, Bridgestone report, and we should go ahead and follow our agenda with the, uh, with the, uh, Walter, are you going to present the LP Phil report? Let's go to that, and then when we get down to Bridgestone, we can let Sean talk, and then we can see how that discussion should go. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, Mr. Good morning. members. I'm just glad to be here. All right. I'm stuck in traffic for about 30 minutes. Um, before I get into our calendar, we feel calendar, I bring to your attention a very special event that occurred here at LP Field on August the 3rd and August the 4th. We have a youth football jamboree uh, with uh, 78 teams. Um, ages ranging from 9 to 10 and 11 and 12 year olds. We had 39 games. We played uh, Friday night, played uh, Saturday morning, and then uh, late Saturday afternoon. Just had a wonderful time. We had uh, approximately 1,500 uh, kids that played on LP Field. We had over 6,000 parents, friends, relatives, cousins uh, that attended the event. Just a wonderful event. Uh, certainly was uh, exciting uh, to the kids. Uh, there was one kid uh, after he had played his game and he, met, he had made the last tackle and he laid on the field. He, he was laying on his back, his arms stretched out and all. So the coaches ran over and said, you are, are you okay? He said, yeah, coach, I'm fine. I'm just taking it all in. It's a lifetime experience uh, yeah. for those kids. And yeah. We were so happy that uh, we were able to, to, uh, to get it done. And that was, uh, that was it was just fun for everybody that was involved. Uh, just a wonderful time. I don't think it was publicized. Uh, no publicity about it, but it was just something that uh, we all thought it was the right thing to do. Yeah, that's good. very good. We that's good. good. Uh, I trust that all of you all have received the LP Field report. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. In our report, as we always do, we furnish you a calendar, uh, a 12 month calendar with all of our events that are coming up. Of course, you do know that uh, our <coughs> first home preseason game is next Thursday uh, with the cards and then following uh, that game the following Thursday we'll, we'll play the Saints. Then we'll have the John Mary Classic on the first. Coach I promise you we're, we're working hard to have a 
great parking plan here, Coach. <laughs> I, I don't like to receive your phone call. <laughs> nah, yeah, yeah. I don't call you. <laughs> <laughs> then on the 9th of September, we'll have our, our first regular season game here with the, with the Patriots. Moving on to tab two, which is our casually uh, lost uh, tab. We been very fortunate that we have not had that many uh, casualty losses. We have one that's existing that's slightly more than $1,000. I anticipate that that will be taken care of for sure. Tab three is our ticket user fee fund balance. Uh, we have uh, approximately $4.3 million uh, in that fund at, at that particular time. Uh, with uh, more events, certainly uh, more money will come in. And at some point in time, there will be a, a bond payment. Tab four, there's our capital fund balance, which shows uh, just over, I'm sorry, let me get to that four, which shows just a little over $385 million. Uh, I'm sorry, $385,000. <laughs> I wish it was 300. <laughs> Just so slightly over 385 with uh, an expected uh, uh, money to be put into that account. Cap 5 is our capital expense reimbursement information. Uh, as always, we like to uh, show the board our unfiled reimbursement request, uh, which is right at 2.6 million at this particular time. Uh, our capital expense items and charge of pending projects, which we like to show you that chart, which uh, shows you the ongoing projects that we, that's, that's underway at LP Field. Uh, some are close to being completed, some are just starting, but we like to show you that so that uh, you'll have an idea of exactly what's going on with that. Our last discussion point is LP Field Innovations. As we've talked about for several months now, our upgrades are certainly there in place. Uh, we're just doing some fine tuning and tweaking and everything with that. We're looking forward to certainly a, a grand time next Thursday, and I hope that you will be there. Do we have any questions? Any questions for Walter? Well, Walter, yes. has the schedule been met with all of the renovations? Yes, uh, this, we, we're, we're on target. Okay. We're on target, and we just want, want to make sure that there's no hiccups uh, for next Thursday, so mm -hmm. everything is, is moving just fine. Dave? I, I want to compliment the uh, uh, Walter and, and all, of, all of the rest on the, the tremendous job they do with regard to casualty losses. Um, Considering the number of people uh, that are there and considering their level of enthusiasm uh, and the, the enthusiasm that sometimes opposing sides have and all of that, the number of losses and accidents and uh, it, 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 with all of the uh, uh, tailgating in the parking areas and all of that, uh, it, it, it's just really a remarkable, remarkable record and shows that you really concentrate on the safety of the people there. And I, I congratulate you on that. I've, I've been dealing with those kinds of losses for almost 50 years now, and it's just remarkable the, uh, uh, the lack of, 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 of such claims that have been made. I congratulate you on that. Thank you. Yeah. Truly, all the credit goes to the Ports Authority and Metro Legal Insurance. We have developed an excellent relationship with them. So when there is a claim that's filed, we are, uh, they have all of, the, all of the evidence or anything that they need to make sure that the claim is paid. So really, the credit goes to them and to uh, Metro Legal Insurance. But thank you for the comments. Yeah. Anything else? Thank you, Walter. Thank you. We wish for a great season. This yeah, it will be. That's yeah. right. Uh, okay, Bridgestone Arena reports, Sean.
Welcome. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Hey. Congratulations. And welcome back. Thank you. It wasn't the least negotiations that did this, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> Felt guilty when I got JD's email on it. Um, you know, uh, our financial, I have to reverse the um, agenda slightly if I can, because I think we'll probably spend more time on facility improvements than our update, your date update. But uh, through May, again, we're enjoying a very nice year. Um, on the fiscal side is uh, where we rank um, from the business overall in the facility. Um, through the end of the calendar year, we finished in the top 10 for the second year in a row, which is always good. Um, the event tours are slightly off, you know, this year through our fiscal um, across the industry. Live Nation just issued their annual report that shows they're off about 40% in tours. It's good to report that we're only off 3% in revenues and 1% uh, off in our expenses from where we thought we'd be or versus last year. So we're enjoying a great year. Um, I think the mid-year reports came out, and I think, again, we're top 10 pacing right now. We always have a better third and fourth quarter, just the way the tours naturally fall. So I feel pretty confident that we'll end up third straight year in the top 10, which is just incredible. I and mean, that's really what we all want to do. Congratulations, Steve. Thank, oh, thank, yeah. thank you all. Um, again, I think we made more news this summer as a franchise and, and a building and powers management than we have since 2007, when the franchise almost left. Uh, started with... Um, the lease that we're pretty proud of, you know, change some of the provisions around a little bit, obviously reduce the guaranteed monies coming to us, give us an opportunity to earn back that money in a few different ways. We're thankful to everyone at the board. And one of the best parts of that, the tenant of the new lease, is addressing a challenge that we've all faced, you know, since the building opened in reality, and that's putting money into the building. So we continue to grow events, grow efficiencies, make the team a little bit better, and continue to spur the economic impact of, of the building and the facility. In September, we're going to have a representative from Populous, the original architect on the building, someone that we've been working with for the past two years, that will basically outline where the building is, what normally happens in the 15th year of a building, what needs to occur to keep the building as modern as possible, so we don't just enjoy a 30-year building, if you will, with the last 10, 15 years of decreasing um, opportunity and operation, but in instead, making it state-of-the-art and modern you know, throughout the life of the building, whether that's 30 years, 40 years, 70 years, whatever it may be. And uh, he has a few recommendations that he thinks we should do. Obviously, we have our own recommendations on operating the building, what we need to do, how do we keep up with some other buildings that we compete with on national um, events. And then, you know, through questions from the board, a lot of interaction with Emmett on certain things that we need to impact. But our goal with the capital funds, um, when they're uh, when the RFPs finally come back from the financing institutions on what money will be available and how we'll um, be able to use that money and take it down, is to every year put that building under state of renovation. Every year we want to make sure that our fans, our performers, and our players have some type of wow impact when they walk in the building. You know, something that gives us an ability to talk about who we are and what we are, and again, continue to change how people view Nashville when they're thinking about uh, touring events. So, we're pretty excited about you know, where that is. The other thing that we're very excited about is um, what we're going to talk about today, and that's some of the improvements we're going to make in the HVAC systems in our building, the energy efficiency. I'm wearing a green tie today to represent what those are. I normally save that for March uh, for the big holiday. St. Patrick's Day. Um, but what, I'm, what I'm excited about with what we're going to talk about today is I think in 2008 or 2009, it was approved by this board to spend $10 million for HVAC improvements. And Emmett said it so well, there have been a lot of enhancements over the years um, that will allow us to have larger impacts for a much smaller investment than that original $10 million that was approved by the board. If you remember, that wasn't funded by the city. What's really exciting about what's happening right now is the city's able to fund uh, 6.4 or $6.38 million in improvements um, with that coming from federal grants for the most part. And that's even more exciting because we identified a need. You asked us to do an energy audit. The one that we did with SSR this past fall was, I think, the seventh one done on the building. And you're right, Judge North, there have been years and years of this is what we need to do, this is what we need to do, and then you were, there was no action taken upon it. Uh, people forget when the building was built, it wasn't contemplated to make ice in April or September or May and ideally June. And no enhancements were made to the HVAC system to say, okay, now we need to make ice efficiently. Um, not just from a cost standpoint, but also from a playing surface standpoint. Every April we bring in about, I don't know, 10 units um, to further chill the building and try to dehumidify the air for the playoffs. 
at a cost of $250,000, $300,000 a month. Ideally, that turns into $750,000 because you need it for April, May, and, and June. We need to do that to stay within the NHL guidelines. So again, the recommendations that were made um, in 2008 or 2009 were based on a series of audits. Again, last year you asked us to do an audit. We used SSR, the original designers of the building, and uh, they put together uh, probably about six and a half million dollars worth of projects, maybe a little bit more. Obviously, we prioritized them. We wanted to make sure that we can control the comfort of the building a little bit differently. Control the building as if each area in the building were a separate operating area. So when we have a meeting in the meeting rooms, it doesn't have to be 48 degrees in there or 90 degrees. And right now, pretty much that's our choice. Either we have airflow or we don't have airflow. When uh, we did the Van Halen tour, one of the more successful shows we did this year, one of the major requirements in that um, rider was you cannot have airflow in the bowl when we go on stage. So much so, I think it was in Miami that, uh, I'm trying to think who the lead singer on this Van Halen tour was. I think it was David Lee Roth this time around. Came out and just uh, stopped the show, refused to play any longer because of the type of HVAC system that they had going on. They knew what we had, they played here in the past. They knew once they walked on stage, it was gonna be a you know a blast Arctic zone that he was gonna play under. So we had to guarantee, don't worry, it won't be, it won't be, it won't be. Well, we shut basically the building systems off. And when we do that with our current system, we shut it off for the whole building. Uh, Terry McConnell, our Vice President of Facility Operations, sit behind me, he's the Chuck Norris lookalike. Um, <laughs> we went up to the upper bowl, and Terry, I don't know what the temperature was, but I think it was 95 degrees, you know, in the building, in the upper bowl. We had condensation in the steel. I mean, it's not what you need. With our new systems, we're gonna be able to control every light in the building and turn on one closet or one room. Every air unit in the building, we're gonna be able to control it and zone it. We're gonna reduce our energy impact. We're gonna reduce the costs. We're gonna reduce virtually every burden that when we look at building a new building today in Metro or anywhere, we wanna make sure it's as state of the art as possible so you're not wasting energy. More importantly for us, by being able to control things at a little different impact, we can do more events. We no longer have to address one more reason why not to play our building. Now we get to brag about it and say, this is why you can be here. This is why you can have a meeting um, in our meeting rooms. This is why you can have a flat show on the arena floor. This is why you can play you know, to 18,000 people and there are no worries. The SEC doesn't have to worry about condensation on the arena floor or the basketball floor. Our hockey team doesn't have to worry about what kind of ice is there gonna be tonight. We want our players thinking about one thing and that's who they're playing and winning and going to one more game as opposed to think about the playing surface. So, we're pretty excited about it because this, at least with this project, it worked the way it was supposed to. We identified a need, we hired um, an expert to figure out what we should do, you approved it, and the city went out and got the funding. So we're pretty excited about it. What I'd like to do is answer any questions you have about it, or more importantly, let someone that knows what they're talking about talk about it. That's Mike Rogers with SSR. Again, they were the original designers of the building. They have spent the past, I don't know, four months, he'll probably claim it six months, but about four months engineering what they would want to do at great risk. I mean, if uh, the financing didn't come through from the city, obviously nothing would have happened. So they're a great partner for us, good partner in the city, and uh, we're excited to let them uh, help us walk through the process. What they're gonna enter now is the phase of some bidding um, process for the bulk of the work. And basically what we're doing is adding cooling uh, capability. We're adding dehumidification capability. Some of those projects actually use slightly more energy when you focus on them on their own. When you look at it in the whole, by lowering the humidity in the building, by adding more efficient um, chilling units, we're gonna lower everything where we are. And again, the zoning of what we're doing, we're gonna reduce our water usage just by changing the type of um, faucets and flush valves that we have. So on every front, it's pretty exciting. You know, we're gonna reduce our energy consumption. We're gonna be able to do more events because of what we can do in each area. And then uh, most importantly, we're gonna you know, lower the burden. Um, from a financial standpoint. So. Could you expand a little bit more on the timeline for the project and the elapsed time? Yeah, from a timing standpoint, and this is a frustration for Mike when he meets with me, I think it should be done by Labor Day, and he seems to think it may take slightly longer. Uh, what we are gonna be able to do, the way they're gonna stage what we're doing, because there's so many different pieces that we're doing, it's not just X or Y, you just can't buy the equipment at a store and put it up, as he's explained to me over and over and over again. Um, but the process really started about four months ago with the engineering phase. Ideally, we're gonna go out um, with their engineering scope of services and do a series of different bids for the scope of work. And uh, the work's gonna start you know, mid-September and it will go really throughout the whole season in a very um, unobtrusive 
um, manner. We're not going to lose any events on it. We don't have to have any blackout dates. I mean, we realize you know that comes at a certain cost, but we're better off shutting it down you know for three days so we can host whatever it may be. The bulk of the work will be done by March, and a lot of the finished work will happen in uh, April and, and May. Uh, he's shaking his head yes, so that's good. Um, but again, it's going to start you know almost immediately. You know the other you know that I, I skipped over a little bit. Our rehearsal hall that has become such a large part of what we do. Um, you know, people rehearse in there, they build their shows in there, and again, that builds us a link to book their show and their tour. And we have some really nice, exciting um, news that we're about to announce of, of some some of the biggest shows that we've ever hosted as a building in uh, 2013. A lot of that came because of the business we do in the rehearsal hall. The rehearsal hall has no AC units at all. So what we do is we rent, and you've seen it on the Mumbry inside of the building, temporary units that we drop down there. They're ugly, they're unsightly, not really that safe, they're not that efficient. The other is when you experience 98 degree temperatures or 100 degree temperatures like we did in um, late May and June, you can't cool that down. And uh, it's one more area that we get to address in a really nice way. So that's gonna be one of the first phases that we're doing. That'll help condition our locker room a little bit better too. I have a question about some of your, some of your opening comments and the mm -hmm. monthly financials, so I can wait until we finish the no cooling way. system. Uh, just you mentioned that uh, Live Nation is reporting a 40% decrease in mm -hmm. in overall concerts, and we've seen a decrease here. Uh, do you see that as a trend, or is, what's Live Nation reporting regarding? Well, you know, that? Live Nation's the largest you know um, uh, promoter out there or right. touring agency. <clears throat> And normally what you have is a very cyclical world of business. You know, I always say, you know, one year's real high, one year's down, and kind of up and down. We've enjoyed probably four years of real nice growth. We're on a nice um, trajectory, and I think that's going to continue for us. And that's not so much because of the touring industry, good or bad. It's because really of the change of philosophy. You know, the incentives that were put in place in 07, a couple years ago we changed the philosophy again. We were promoting our own shows. You look at the business through uh, April and May, and I think nine out of 12 shows, you know, some being hockey games, but we actually bought. You know, we no longer wait for the phones to ring to say, sure, you can play here. We're going out and buying shows and, and having them here. So that has really allowed us to fight against the trend of the last year, you know, how shows, tours have decreased slightly. It looks like um, for this fiscal year, um, it's picking back up a little bit. And again, it kind of follows it up and down, but it's early, you know, it's hard to tell, but um, I'm pretty, positive about some of the things that we're about to announce. So I think it's going to come back out a little bit for them as well. For us, again, our philosophy is a little bit different. Uh, we were down in Atlanta yesterday working with a promoter, Live Nation actually, and had a few other meetings, just really outlining the next two or three years. But more importantly, reinforcing to them that Nashville's a little bit different today. We're a different organization than we used to be. And um, have faith, you know, jump on in. And we're basically guaranteeing sellouts on a handful of shows to say, you got to play here. We believe in it taking great risk to do that. But again, when you do those on shows that have not played here, maybe in the history of this band or performer, you change everyone's mentality. Wait a minute, you did what in Nashville? And that, that's the important part. And again, that goes back to uh, Tom Segrin's commitment a little over two years ago when he took over as chairman of the Predators and uh, the overall organization. So we're removing the word can't from our organization. Um, that's been proven over the past few years how we've accelerated all fronts of the business. I think it was really slammed home last year when we signed Pecker and A for the seven-year contract, and then most notably a few weeks ago when uh, we signed Shea Weber to the second largest deal in the history of the NHL. That philosophy overlays into what we do in the building, too. So I know it's a long answer, too. Sure, I sure. think it'll be okay. So, so you guys have a responsibility as an ongoing trend, and that's to, to uh, be more proactive in trying to go out and get exactly. business. Exactly. And, and really, that started a few years ago, again, because of the incentives. Again, the way our new deal works, we're even more incentive-laden so it's even more important for us to, to be a little bit more aggressive. So, sure. if, so then the follow-up question is, if the trend continues, I noticed that the expenses have not coincided in terms of a decrease in expenses. Do you guys have a contingency to reduce expenses before the end of the fiscal year in the event that the revenue doesn't catch up? Well, the revenue probably won't catch up completely. We had the best June that we've ever had, and that, that's encouraging. You know, finalize the numbers with the year-end close. Um, but as we said, or I said at least two years ago when I got here, is that we were going to be fairly aggressive in growing revenues. With that, it's going to become a little increase in expenses for a period of time to get us over that hump to launch forward. And that's what we're experiencing now. You still have those expenses. You know, a lot of them are fixed. The biggest challenge that we've had, though, is that just large amount of deferred capital improvements, which then fell to the burden of 
things that we need to expense, whether it be our, our um, contracts for maintenance, whether it just be the surprises we got because so our systems are not in the shape that they should be. Um, again, a lot of deferred maintenance over the years rolled into the past two or three years. I mean, a lot of little things that I just didn't think was, were acceptable. You, know, you have the neon lights on the tower, you know, kind of the signature statement of the building that were burned out or broken seven years ago, eight years ago. So we have to, I mean, you have to replace that. I mean, it's almost embarrassing to have burned out light bulbs, if you will, but it was a thirty or $40,000 expense. Should that have been capital? Yeah, it could be, depending on how you look at it. I mean, you would argue both sides, at least Beth will tell me you can. Um, but we went out and did that because you should do it. And there are a lot of those elements that are there. You know, repainting walls, patching walls. You're not going to bring new people to your building if they feel it's in disrepair. Sure. So. I, I just, and this is a comment, I, I think, uh, at least during my tenure on the board, uh, this board has been uh, somewhat contentious with you guys related to the financials. I've never noticed that. <laughs> <laughs> and I think over the last several months, you, you guys, or the last year or so, you guys have done a great job at improving those relations because of what you're reporting and because of the improvements. So I've just cautioned you not to let the expenses outpace the revenues so, to a point to where it gets back to that level. Oh, no, it's, uh, especially with our, again, our deal caps, and you're responsible for everything above it. So, I mean, from a sheer business standpoint, you know, that's obviously something front and center. At the same time, there was some investment spend that we needed to do sure. to really change how people view the building. Yeah. So, but thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Steve? <clears throat> I want to be sure that you're finished. I, I'm done. Yeah. All right. I'm done. Uh, uh, with regard to the energy, mm -hmm. the, the new improvements that we're making in, in the Basically, the utility cost, uh, what I would call utility, heat and air and plumbing and that sort of thing. Do you have an estimate as to the savings, the sort of the net savings that we are, are anticipating or looking at? I mean, are we talking about saving a million dollars a year or a hundred dollars a year or? $5 million a year, have you gotten some estimates? I know that that's a very important part of this. Oh, it, it's huge. Again, the reason the improvements are important, first and foremost, are the functionality of the building. Right. The second byproduct, which is tremendous, is there's a, there's a real savings. You gotta look at the savings in two, two ways. The first is if we don't rent any equipment. You know, a few years ago, if you don't make the playoffs, you don't rent equipment. Right. Um, if we don't use the rehearsal hall like we did a few years ago, you don't rent that equipment either. But um, based in the savings assumptions, you know, if we're spending about $300,000 a year right now in rental equipment based on making two rounds of the playoffs, again, we're planning on that to change. But if you just use that as a constant and roughly eighty dollars to $100,000 a year in rental for the rehearsal hall, you'd say that could get wiped out you know, completely. If you look at it without that, though, the savings, um, they're probably in the three to $400,000 range, you know, without contemplating the rent, uh, the, um, uh, the rentals. But again, that's at peak performance. That's assuming a million five a year. But um, so the savings are fairly significant. But again, a lot of those savings are also going to be in reinvested. Some of the things aren't energy savings. They're actually going to use more because the building just wasn't designed for hockey. Right. So it, 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 be sure I understand what you're saying. Mm -hmm. That if you take into account the equipment that we're now renting, but we don't, we won't have to rent with the new improvements. Mm -hmm. And the, kind of, we will have to rent it if we were. If this year we made the Stanley Cup Finals and we had the 110 degree temperatures again, we probably would have had to rent it. But for the most part, we won't have to rent that. Right. So looking at roughly three hundred thousand dollars in savings on rental and mm -hmm. another. Three hundred thousand dollars, two to four hundred thousand. Ideally, mm -hmm. uh, so a total sort of return on this investment would be a savings of about six hundred thousand dollars. Three, three to six hundred fifty thousand dollars. Okay. Correct. Uh, the other thing that I noticed that the that through May on your financials, <clears throat> the net operating loss, if I understand these numbers, and I'm not very good at numbers, but I think I understand it more than. <laughs> Most people in the room. Um, <laughs> it, it looks like you're about three million dollars. I'm sorry, two million dollars over in, in the net operating loss. Mm -hmm. About two million dollars ahead of what had been budgeted. Uh, and 
from from last year but so that everybody understands under our agreement anything over the net operating loss cap is the responsibility of powers and, and the predators right. and is not a taxpayer responsibility right so that aggressive nature we're talking about the investment we're making truly can't we're already above the net operating loss right virtually every year since it was put into place so the fact that we went out to invest spend more to change the business again 100 percent of that came from us and, and it's not anticipated that these improvements in the energy consumption will not bring the net operating loss below the cap uh no it won't the way it's planned right now and the benefit of the improvements will hit not so much in fiscal 13 but when they're fully implemented really in fiscal 14 but it does allow us to battle against those yeah that that that's an area that i was concerned about and that uh, now our goal is obviously to continue to reduce sure, the net sure. operating loss for obvious reasons, and that that that's what you're in business for. Mm -hmm. Brad, yeah, just 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 a comment, you know, for context. And I don't disagree with with the concerns that that any of us have over operating expense, but keep in mind, operating expenses are up because we are utilizing the building more fully than we have in the past mm -hmm. which after all is the prime objective for having built this building in the first place mm -hmm. the more it's utilized the more people come to nashville leave their money here either at the arena or in the areas around it but certain operating expenses come with that so while I, I applaud the work that the, that Powers is doing to minimize the operating expenses, the other operating efficiencies that they're looking at, I think we need to be mindful as we look at the finances that if we want the building used to its fullest capacity, the operating costs are going to be higher than if we just used it the warehouse old equipment. Mm -hmm. Thank you, John. Thank you. Other comments, other questions, Sean? What I'd like to do is uh, introduce Mike Rogers, and probably in a more eloquent, more brief manner than I even did, we're going to talk about the improvements made in the process. Okay, Mike. If you have any questions, try to one of them. You can answer. <laughs> um, I guess I guess Sean asked me here to really provide maybe a more technical view of what we're doing, and so I guess that's that's uh, that's the point here. Um, we, we were hired on and we've been involved in the arena since the very beginning. SSR did the original mechanical electrical plumbing design for the arena. Um, and some of you were, were here back then and it was very a very different approach. Um, it was one of the first arena of its kind, really. Since then, SSR has gone on and we've done arenas all over the country and all over the world, really sprung from this, this, uh, this arena here. So we've got a lot of experience with it and we do retrofits in arenas just like this um, all over. We have a group that focuses on energy savings and that's all they look at. They evaluate the, the building systems and, and utility bills and, and, they, and they come up with uh, solutions. And then we try to implement it on my side of the house, we try to implement those solutions with, uh, with design. And um, so, so real, real briefly, I guess, what we did on this one was we looked at the original intent of the building was uh, not for hockey, even though a hockey core was built. Um, they were, there was, uh, significant issues with humidity control um, for years we've been outside of the nhl standards in the building so our goal was to bring it back into the standards and so the question was how do we do it the most economically way the most efficient way we kind of came up with a different solution and i don't want to get too deep in the weeds mechanically with you but we're actually installing additional chillers that serve the bowl air handling units to, to wring out the moisture so it's kind of a unique approach. We've done it before in other buildings and it works wonderfully. We just depress the, the air and, and it just rings out more of the moisture. So that, that's the, the, the main thing is to get the ice so that it's, it's good for the players and the environment for the people so that you don't have to freeze them out at the beginning of the game and then they get too hot by the end of the game. So we're increasing capacity. Now that, that is not an energy savings uh, idea. It's, it's, a, it's a comfort level for sure. So that's the one thing that we're doing that really isn't saving energy. But we're, we're compensating for that and, and correcting for that by providing a, a, a control system that's going to greatly benefit the, the arena. The controls that are in there now, um, like Sean alluded to, um, there's a lot of things that they just can't do. They have to turn off whole sections of the building. 
Um, they can't control individual rooms very well. A lot of their air handlers don't have variable uh, frequency drives on them, so the fans just run 100% all the time, which you don't need. So, so we're, we're providing uh, uh, variable frequency drives and control systems to, to, to better, better utilize the system the way it is. Um, so that's one of the significant energy savings uh, pieces that we're doing. The other is the lighting, lighting control and lighting fixtures themselves. Um, technology has advanced uh, in great ways in the last 10 years on, on lighting. And um, so we're going in and changing out fixtures and also changing out the controls so that uh, so they can control individual rooms, individual spaces, program it, set it, so that uh, you know, one, of the biggest, one of the biggest utilizations of energy in, in these buildings is, is uh, lighting. And uh, been, I've been all over the, the country in facilities, and, and you'd be surprised when you walk through and every light in the building's on, and, and the yep. answer is we don't have any way of turning them off unless we physically go to every room and turn them off. So that's one of the things we're doing as well. And then we're also getting into the, um, to the water management in the building and providing fixtures that are, that are higher efficiency and those kinds of things. So those are the main components of, of what we're doing. And, and um, I'd be glad to elaborate on those things or, or give you more detail, whatever you, whatever you might need. Hi. Um, thank you for the work you guys are doing. I think it would be helpful through this process to maybe have you come quarterly and just kind of give us a status update and walk us through the improvements that have been made and sure. help us understand where we've been and where we're going and, and where we are to date. So I would just ask to that'd, be, that'd be great. It's a great idea. To do that. Yeah. The, uh, just to give you kind of a snapshot of the, that schedule, the, the first phase of it is really to, to deal with the, the bowl air handlers and the dehumidification and the, and the main head-in unit for the controls of the HVAC system. So that's the first project we're going to do. And, and, and that uh, we've essentially got the design complete on that. Um, we're going to uh, get, we've got four contractors that, that uh, we've pre-selected that are going to bid on it. And so we're going to do that as the first phase. And then from that, we'll move into lighting controls. And we'll, we'll deal with the lighting controls. And then we're going to come back to the HVAC and finish the rest of the HVAC improvements through the building, control-wise and air handler, all that. And then we'll come back to the lighting again and actually change out lighting fixtures. And then the final thing will be the water, water solution. So, so that's the sequence that we're going through, and, it, and it'll be all of those are separate projects, separate contracts, and, and, and uh, we're, we're pre-selecting bidders on it so that we get some good bids and, and people that we trust to do do a good job. So, but I'll be glad to come back. That's, that's yeah. great. We'll follow up on that, Kim. Other questions or comments? Anybody have a question? Thank you, Mike. Thank you. We probably don't know enough to ask. Yeah, that's all right. That's all right. That's all right. We have to depend on the experts in this. Thank you very much. Anything else? Any other questions of Sean or Roger, the Bridgestone report? Thank you, Sean. Thank you, staff. We'll move to the next item on our agenda. Margaret's going to talk about the Cyrus FM radio amendment. Uh, well, it was my understanding that a question was raised at the last meeting uh, about the capital improvements and um, what would happen to those improvements should we agree to the amendment and then Sirius decides to leave for whatever reason they want to leave. Um, under the current lease, equipment that was included as part of the initial capital improvement. They were supposed to make a um, $800,000 investment into capital improvements in this area. Um, any equipment that was included as part of that would stay. They don't get to take that with them. Um, any other personal property, they can remove at their own expense. If they do not remove that equipment, then the board is permitted to consider it abandoned and do with it as the board sees fit. So um, as far as the amendment goes, there's nothing in there that is um, legally impermissible. It would be just a, a business decision for the board to make. Okay, Amy, do you have any questions. comments on that? Just that uh, in view of that report from Metro Legal, uh, we would ask that the board vote to accept the termination uh, language. I'd like to add one more thing. Um, we need to have a more formal document for the amendment. The, the, what was submitted was a request from Sirius uh, for the board to accept. 
I'm trying to get in touch with their attorney so that we can create a more formal document. But there will be something that is you know, entitled Amendment 1 to the agreement. We'll get that filed with the Metro clerk and, and everything. So. We, we hope that that uh, summation from legal would give the board comfort that uh, it would not uh, suffer a loss, if you will, for the termination. Bear in mind that this was fellow, uh, this was an empty space that <clears throat> required a great deal of effort in order to get and find a tenant. Uh, it still is uh, some of the best space on Broadway, but it's, uh, when you have a good match like you do with this company, they've been outstanding tenants, we'd like to keep them and, and hope that they'd like to keep us. Actually, I think uh, members of the board at the time went up and actually looked at that area at one point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The timing on that, Emmett, do we have, a, a, or Margaret, do we have to have that uh, agreement before our, another meeting, or can we bring that back? I, I think if the board wanted to approve um, your execution of the amendment, as long as it is substantially follows the terms that were provided by Sirius, that would be fine. Okay. Or if the board wishes, we can get the document and bring it back. and have you review it at the next meeting and, and sign it then. I, with this explanation, and I think it goes along with what I remember from law school about the difference between fixtures and personal property. I remember the example was that if you put something into a rental space with screws, then it's removable. If you put it in with nails, it's a fixture and becomes a part of the real estate. And I think that's basically what what we're still dealing with. Uh, and that I think that, I, I, having said that, I would move that we authorize the chair to uh, sign this lease agreement or this extension of the lease agreement. Uh, upon the receipt of the formal documentation that's approved by the legal department. Second. It be the amendment. Yeah. It's, a, it's the amendment. The amendment. The amendment. Yeah. yeah. Motion's made and second. Discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Thank you. I'd like to acknowledge today that we have Monica with us uh, for our meeting. I know we all talk to her from time to time and we get her notices yeah. and it's good to see her in the audience and glad to have her yeah. with us and also she's been our contact during Emmett's illness also at the authority and we appreciate you and your work and your support for what we do and Emmett we're delighted to see you back today and hope Thank you. you continue to have a good recovery. Thank you very and much. Any other announcements or anything to come before the meeting today? No, no sir Mr. Chairman. Okay. I have a motion we adjourn. Thank you so much. So, 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 so